the Dopey Challenge. What is your race strategy? All right, Kevin, I'm at Disney. I'm going to run the Dopey Challenge. I have no idea how to set out to do this. This is, let's just be honest, it's one of the dumbest things a person can do. Yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> to put your body through this. What is a strategy? Let's talk about a strategy. I'm sure there are different strategies. So first, how do you come up with a strategy? How do you decide what you want to do? Well, there are a lot of things you need to take into consideration. And, and, for those of you that are joining us for the first time or, or maybe maybe you've done some Red Disney events, let me, let me define the Dopey Challenge and then let's talk about how to attack it. Uh, the, the Dopey Challenge is, is part of the crown jewel of Walt Disney World running events, run Disney events. That is the Marathon Weekend, which is generally the, usually the second weekend of January. And you have the Marathon, which is on a Sunday, you have the half marathon, which is on a Saturday. You have a 10K, which is on a Friday, and 5K, which is on a Thursday. If you choose to do all four of those consecutively, that's called the Dopey Challenge, which it is dopey to be doing. This is this is coming up on the 10th year. of So this will be the 10-year anniversary of the Dopey Challenge. Um, some of those of us who were really, again, it's like one of the dumbest things you can right. do, but um, some of us are like really, really dumb. We're called perfect dopies. I mean, okay. we've done every single one. Oh, and, wow. Um, so there's, I'm not exactly sure how many of those are left now because there was a virtual year right. and, but there is a list of those, but it's not a lot of people have done, done all 10, but, but that is what the dopey challenge is. And so one of the things as I've done this now coming up on the 10th time, there's a lot of different strategies and I've done all of these strategies. And I believe that, I believe that what you, what you have to do is you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Number one, what's my why for doing, doing the dopey challenge. And a lot of people have a lot of different reasons. Um, a lot of those are very personal to them. Um, but, but what is your why? Why, why are you wanting to take something like this on? And then the second thing is, what do you want this weekend experience to be like for you? Because these strategies will all give you a different different experience. All right. Well, then let's start with the folks who are really, really taking it seriously, the marathon runners. Let, yeah. Let's talk about those people first. What's, what's, the, what's the strategy there? Yeah. I mean, if, if marathon is the goal and, and there are, surprisingly, there's, there's a large number of people, this will be their first marathon. Um, actually for me, my first marathon was part of the Goofy Challenge, which started doing this before the Dopey was even started, which half marathon one on Saturday, full marathon on Friday. There's a lot of first timers that, that will take on the Dopey Challenge and this will be their very first marathon. So you've got those marathon people. Then you have people who are experienced marathon runners who want to come and they want to run. They want to race the marathon portion. Okay, so if that is your goal, then what you have to take into consideration is you are going to be the challenge that makes the Dopey Challenge the challenge is usually when you run a marathon, what you're doing is you're tapering, which means that you are, you really slow down your training about two weeks out and you're not running long mileage. You're staying off your feet the week leading up to your, if your race is on a Sunday, that week leading up to it. I mean, you're out shaking, you basically you're out doing shake your legs out runs, which means you go out and you run three, four, maybe five miles, very easy. You're just trying to basically get your body rested up and prepared to go take on a 26.2 mile race. Well, the problem here is you're starting on Thursday and not only Thursday, I go back to Wednesday, really on Wednesday or Tuesday, whatever your travel day is, you're traveling generally a long, generally taking a longer right. trip. Not that many, relatively speaking, just locals that are running this race. So you're flying in, you're driving. I mean, when we drive it's seven hours. So you, you've got a long, long trip in, all the logistics of, of traveling. 
Then on Wednesday, you've got the, the expo, which you go in and you're, you're walking around, you're, you're standing in line to get registered, you get registered, you go over, you're looking around at all the cool little vendors that are set up. So you're on your feet, all, you're excited, all those things. Then you start on, on Thursday running in your 5K, your 10K, and then your half marathon on Saturday. If you're going to do the marathon and you're going to try to attack the marathon, you're going to have to take it easy on those days. Right. 5K, don't go out there. And, and, and Jed, the problem is the thing that makes the Run Disney event so awesome is the energy. I mean, there is so much energy out there. You got all these people, thousands of people out there. You've got an announcer up there. You got music blaring. You've got characters there. You got fireworks go off whenever the you take off, and then you're supposed to just take it easy. <laughs> so you're all geeked up. You're fired up. You're standing at the start line. And it's like, okay, I got to take these three right. days easy. It's hard. It's hard. I've gone out with the intention of hammering the marathon. And on 5K and 10K day, I can't contain myself, and I end up running hard. And it ruins you. Yeah. You can't – you really can't go out. And I'm going to talk about another strategy in a second. But you really can't go out and do the 5K, the 10K, the half marathon, all those relatively hard, and then make a really good shot at the marathon. You just can't do it. Your body's just not going to be able to recover, and it's not going to be in the state to be able to do it. So – the key, if you're going to take on the marathon, is you have got, and there are a lot of people when they do this, they will walk the entire half marathon. But yeah, that's 13 miles of yeah, walk. That's, that's still a pound on your body, but you you have a 16 minute, you got to keep a 16 minute per mile pace. But if, if you're really going out to try to run the marathon hard, you're probably going to not be in one of the back corrals. You're probably going to be in mid corral or, or, or above. You got more than 16 minutes from mile. So you can go out. I would encourage you take the half marathon to hit every character stop, to enjoy the bands and everything else that's going on, to really, really take it easy. Slow walk. Not, a, not even out there power walking. Just take it easy. For a lot of runners and type A people, that's really hard to do. Because, well, people are going to see my online posted results, and they're going to like, holy cow! It took it took her three and a half hours to right. finish that half marathon. Forget about it. If your goal is a marathon, you're going to have to take that half marathon, especially easy. Five k, ten k. You're out there early in the morning. Just take it easy. If you want to five um, k, if you just want to kind of jog it. Shake your legs out. 10K, if you just kind of want to run, walk, jog, walk it. Just, again, just kind of getting your getting your legs shaken out. And then then just walk that half marathon. Then you're going to want to take it easy on half marathon day. When you're done, you know, we're going to want to take in some good recovery. Things you, you may want to get a massage, take an ice bath, something to, to get those legs refreshed. And you're going to want to stay off your feet on um on that half marathon, which is Saturday. So after you, after you eat breakfast, after you get your recovery stuff in, you're going to want to, you're going to want to stay off your feet. You're not going to want to go home, go back to the resort and just sleep all day. Right. But you're going to want to stay off of your, stay off of your feet. There's a, um, I mean, there's, you could go down to downtown Disney and watch a movie. You yeah. could, there's, there's different things you can do, but you're not going to want to go to a park and walk around, walk five miles and, Walk 13 miles in the morning and then you go walk five miles in a, in a park. So if marathon is the goal, then you're going to have to plan that week in those races, that 5K, 10K, and half marathon. You're going to have to take it easy. Check your ego at the door. And then when you go to, when you get to get the full marathon day, you'll be in the best possible position you can be to take on that marathon. What if my goal is exactly the opposite? What if I'm going to Disney and I just happen to be running? And I want all the character stops and I want all the picture spots and I want all that other stuff. Is there a strategy for that? Yeah, there, there is. And a lot of people do this. A lot of people are going to Disney to have fun. Let me give, let me, let me give a caveat to that. You better be training. And if this is the first of our podcast you're listening to, you need to go back to the podcast where we just talked about logistics and 
the real training has started and what if I'm behind? That's the last dopey podcast we just put out. Go back and listen to that. You better be trained. You don't have to be out killing yourself, running, running super fast. Even if you're just out walking, literally every workout you're doing is just walking. That's fine. But what you don't want to do is put yourself in a position to where you're starting in the last corral and then you're having to keep a 16 minute mile pace walk and you're trying to have fun, but you're exhausted because you haven't, you haven't put in any training. You've just walked a 5k, walked a 10k, walked a half marathon, and now you're facing 26 miles and you're going to get swept off the course. That's not fun. So to have fun, you have to, you have to do the training, different kind of training. We just talked about that person that's trying to do the marathon and, and attack it. The, you know, we'll talk about another strategy for the half marathon, which is actually the one I'm taking. You're going to have to be training in a different way, but the key, key thing, even if you're just going to go have fun is get the miles in, get the time in on your feet. So the first time that you're on your feet that long is not while you're on the course. Because having Disney, I've told people this so many times, you're paying a lot of money to do this. I mean, you're, I mean, well over 600 bucks in doing these, doing this challenge. Plus wherever you're staying, plus dying, all those things. You're spending a lot of money to go get this experience. Go have the experience. Um, If you're going to just have fun on the course, then, then what you want to do is just plan accordingly. You want to look at your look at your times. What what is your pace that you can comfortably keep? And then you figure out of okay, does that allow me the time I need to stop at the different different character stops, you know, and and do the things that you want to do? Do you want to ride a ride? You need to plan these things, and and then you're able to go out and go out and do that. The key thing you need to keep in mind is that 16 minute per mile pace, especially if you're in the last corral. Where that 16 minutes starts is there's something called the balloon lady. Okay. They're not official Disney people, but they're everybody knows who they are. And they what they do is they they are the last starters of the of the race. When they start, they're keeping on their watch, they're keeping a 16 minute per mile pace. Those balloon ladies, if you don't stay in front of them, then behind the balloon ladies are buses. And you get to certain points on the course. If you're not keeping that 16 minute per mile pace, they will sweep you. Okay. And what that what that means? They don't come by with sweepers, right? But they, they put you on the bus. They put you on the bus, and your days your days over. It is, um, yeah. That is a that's a place you don't want to be. Right. That is high stress. Oh, I yeah. mean, I've talked to people that have been, and they're just like, yeah, I just didn't, I didn't have it. I wasn't prepared, and I was just, I was looking behind me, and it was like Darth Vader just right behind me, just following me on the course. That's no fun. So if you're going to have fun, you need, don't, don't make the mistake of saying, Oh, I'm just going to Disney for the dopey challenge just to have fun. And I'm going to do this and I'll be able to, and don't think because you can go out, you can go out in your neighborhood yet and you can, you can walk one mile at a 16 minute pace. And you're like, Oh, I can keep a 16 minute pace. Now do the next one. Yeah, you're, you're, this is 48 miles. You know, guys, folks, this is 48 miles. Look, I, 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 I've said before, don't underestimate this and don't overestimate it. If you'll put in the time, again, it's not about speed. It's about time. If you'll put in the time training, you look at that Galloway plan. If you just went out and literally just put in the time and you walked the entire time, you would be perfectly ready to go there, finish under the time requirements, have a good time, get the character stops, ride rides, get all the pictures, have a great time. You can do that, but you, you still have to put in the training to do it. The, the dopey is not something that you can fake your way through. Right. I mean, you just can't go out. I mean, you can, you can fake your way through some things, but 48 miles, when you're standing on Sunday morning, and this five o'clock in the morning, or you're standing there at four thirty in the morning, and your legs are burning, sore. You're tired, hadn't got a lot of sleep. I'm not trying to scare everybody, but, but 
I'm just telling you, that Sunday morning, you're standing there and you're asking yourself a lot of questions like, why am I so stupid? Why did I sign up? But there's no greater exhilaration than when you cross that finish line. But but when you're standing there at 4.30 in the morning, you, you don't want to be sitting there having regrets of, God, I didn't, put any, I didn't put any of this training in, and I wonder how soon I'm going to get swept. No, you want to be thinking, hey, I've done what I need to do. Now I can go out and have a good time. Right. I can walk a little bit faster, or maybe I can even jog a little bit between the between the character stops, and I can stop and get all the pictures I want, and I'm not even going to worry about those, those balloon ladies chasing me down. So <laughs> so if you want to have fun, that's I probably, I don't know, I'd say a third of the people, third to a half of the people. They're going down just for the experience of, I love Disney, and I want to go do this. And, and you know that's a that's awesome. Just don't don't underestimate that it is a it is a really big task. Even if you're just going out and you're going to walk the entire thing. All right. Well, that's that's those forty percent. We'll we'll go between a third and a half. And so that's those forty percent of the people. And we've covered the people who are attacking the marathon. What about the rest of the folks? Are, are there a couple of strategies that they can embrace? Yeah, there there are. And I will tell you what I think the best strategy is, and I'll keep that one for last. Um, but the, the next strategy would be, and this is what I think is the craziest strategy, but there are some people that do this. There are some people that I know that, that, that are perfect dopies that, that do this. And generally they end up blowing up, but that's what they want to do. Right. They're fine doing it. So that's what they want to do. And it's the, every race is its own race strategy. Okay. And what that means is show up Thursday morning to the 5k and you are all out. You're going to PR your 5K. You're going in, use PR and flat. I'm going to go out and I'm going to hammer out the 5K. Okay. You hammer it out. End of that Thursday, you feel awesome. Man, I just I just killed it. feel good. So you go do your thing, eat, do whatever you're going to do that day. Come back and show up on Friday morning. It is literally like you're showing up for the 10K race at Disney. Okay. Forget about the 5K. You, it never happened. And there's no half marathon tomorrow. You come and you run the run the 10K as hard as you can. Generally, you run it really good, feel good. You're even have a little confidence like, oh, yeah, I can I can do this. This is, this is not a big deal. So you go do what you're going to do on Friday. Eat, go to the park, do whatever you're going to do. Go to sleep Friday night. And you were, it's like you're going to sleep before a big half marathon that you got. And usually when people are running half marathons, it's kind of it's a big deal mm -hmm. to them. They're going and, and they're going to, I'm going to try to PR this, this right. half marathon. So you show up, you go out and you run the half marathon hard as you can. Usually this is when you kind of start right. feeling feel a little, little bit. Yeah. You yeah. get, you get down to magic kingdom and you're coming back, you're halfway in and you're like, okay, I'm not able to kind of keep my, but you can generally kind of tough it out. Right. And, and you get to the end of it and you're like, Oh man, that was tough, but I finished it out. Here's where the problems come. <laughs> you got a marathon tomorrow. <laughs> the problems come here is because you got a marathon tomorrow. And this is usually where the regrets of people. Now, again, there are some people that, that it is, they're just tougher than I am and it's what they like to do. But then you've just been, here, here's the problem. When you run, man, I would rather, yeah, if, if I go out and run a marathon and I'm running marathon pace and, and running long mileage, I'm sore the next day. I mean, mm -hmm. you feel it, but it's not like bad, bad. Right. But if I go like with my daughter who runs um, cross country, if I, if I go run a 5K, local 5K, and I'm going out, I'm, like, I'm going to go out and hammer this 5K. Man, it wrecks my body for like four yeah. or five days. And, and because I'm running hard. Right. The problem is you go out and run a 5K hard. And again, like I said, I don't last one. Fireworks are going off. You're all amped up. I mean, it's a different environment. You're you're overextending yourself a little bit. You get your your body's going to be telling on you by by right. Sunday morning. So then you're standing there Sunday morning, and you're like, man, what did I do? This like, but you go out and you you hammer out that man hammer out that marathon the best that you can. So that's the every race is its own race. I mean, you 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 treat all four days as their own individual events, and you go out and do it. 
usually you're going to pay the piper on Sunday. I was going to say, that doesn't seem like the best yeah. idea. What, what you see there is, and I've done this before, and probably the best shape I've ever been in um, to to do that was a year that I did this. And I'll never forget when I got to, for those of you who have run before, back, back in the old course, you would run through, um, you'd run through the animal kingdom and when you would come out and you'd come out on Osceola Parkway, you'd come through the, uh, through the parking lot of Animal Kingdom. Now it, it wraps back around the other way, but I'll never forget the feeling I had when I hit the Animal Kingdom parking lot. You're halfway mm-hmm. at that point. And man, I hit a wall like I've never hit before. I mean, I was done, Jed. I mean, <laughs> done as close as I've ever come to quitting yeah. during the doping. I mean, it was, and my time up to that point was good. I had run a good half marathon portion of the marathon. Mm-hmm. But man, when it when it grabbed me, it just grabbed me. My body said, I'm done. You're walking. You ain't running no more. There's no more. And so you want to talk about a long march home. Oh, I bet. The long march home was the 13 mile walk at the end of that that run. So I'll just word of warning for those of you that decide to to do that. There are some people that do it. Hey, fine, fine with that. Now. Let me tell you the last way and what I think is the best way to attack this weekend. And this is actually the one that I'm doing this year, the strategy I'm taking. And I call it the half marathon hammer. Okay. And what that means is you are you are going to try to hammer out the half Everything else you're not worried about. Okay. So 5K, 10K, you're, you are doing whatever you feel comfortable doing, whatever you would do at a normal half marathon lead up. To your way, you, you'll do that. And, and, and generally, you're not going to be running a 5K two days before and a 10K. That, so what you're going to do is you're going to take those extremely easy, especially the 10K. Like this year, what I'll do is, is I'll go out and I'll, I'll run the 5K, I'm not going to hammer the 5K. I'll, I'll just, it'll be kind of a jog, just getting my bearings about me. 10K. I'm going to run, walk it. And when I say run, walk, jog, walk it, where slow, short stride, jog, and then walk. I may jog for a minute or two, walk for a minute or two, just slow, just, just not extending myself, not just preparing myself for the half. I'll be making sure my nutrition's right, doing everything I need to do. I'll get in bed early on Friday night, and then I'll go out and I will make a run like this year, my goal, it's been, it's been several, several years before I've been under two hours in a half marathon. So my goal this year is to be under two hours in the, in the half marathon, which is about a nine minute per mile, right. per mile pace. So that, that's my goal. So I will go out and on the half marathon, the only thing I'm worried about is my pace and, and getting to the finish line in my goal. So I'm not stopping for characters. I'm not looking at the band. I'm not doing anything. I'm going to be laying the hammer down and finishing that race in that time. Now, here's what that means. That means that your, your marathon day is, and, and, I, and I really think this, this kind of gives you the best of both worlds. The last, well, two strategies ago was have fun. Mm-hmm. Well, the best day to have fun is on marathon day. I believe because you get to see so much more. Oh, there's so much okay. more. I mean, you, you start at Epcot, you 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 run now with the new course. You run through Epcot, you come back out, you run all the way down to um, Magic Kingdom, and on on that road, you're you've got you've got bands playing, you've got character stops, you got all these things, so you can stop for the characters, get pictures, take your time. You roll on down, you go through the Magic Kingdom. There's, there's all kind of picture opportunities. You run through the castle, come out of there. You, you run by um, Grand Floridian, coming up what we call Cone Alley. But you, you, you run, you run up the, to Grand Floridian. You can get, get some pictures. They got all kind of characters next to the golf course. Then you head on over to Animal Kingdom, and again. All through this, and you can ride rides, the ones that are open that you come to, you can you can just take it easy. And so that's what I'm going to do is is I'm going to 
hammer out that that half marathon. And I know on Sunday I'm going to be sore because again you're running hard running for thirteen and, and a half miles. Running running hard mm-hmm. is much much harder on your body than running long right. and slower. So so I will. That's what I'll do, and I'm just going to enjoy and have fun on the half, on on the full marathon course, and not care one bit about my time, because it's you know I'll be trained up to where I can. If I want to go out, if I want to walk the entire thing, which I won't walk the entire thing, but but I'll be jogging and go to the character stop, get there, hang out with the people on the course, talk to them, and then you know just finish up that that full marathon and. And I will have accomplished my goal, which is, which PR, I mean, not PR, but, but got my time back under two hours for the first time in several years. And then able to go out and have a good time on Sunday, not killing yourself, not worried about a time there. So you kind of get the, the best of best of both worlds. And so, you know, with these strategies, I, I think you need to, you need to decide what that strategy is going to be now, because it, it changes your training. Uh, like for the half marathon hammer, you're going to have to be doing some, you're going to have to add in probably a little bit of speed work. If you're really going to go make a run at a half, a really good half marathon time. Um, if you're just going out and have fun, then your training will be, I've just got to be disciplined in getting the, getting the time and the mileage in. Even if it's just, even if you're just walking the entire time, don't make the mistake of not training. If the marathon is the goal, then again, those, you're going to look at everything. Those long runs are going to be the the key things in your in your plan that that you just cannot cannot miss. And you know, and if you're going with every race as its own race strategy, well, then you're just crazy. And there's really nothing. You're not going to listen to anything anybody says because it doesn't make sense to do that. But if you're going to do that, then then I would just say, you know, plan. As you're doing some of these back-to-back training days, which are there's training blocks inside Dopey where you have where you'll run three days in a row, then practice some of those, and you may want to practice them hard to to try to get get used to feeling your body feeling the way it's going to feel because it's going to be it's going to be tough. So so the, these are what I believe are the four main race strategies that you can have, and I think you need to decide what those are now. And and then train appropriately for them. And and again, I just say if if you are, you know, we're three and a half months out when you're hearing this, three to three and a half months out, depending on when you're listening. If if you're still behind on training, go back to where you left off. Don't jump in and start doing big mileage because you'll hurt yourself. But stay consistent. Stay consistent, and you will be you will be fine. Um, next podcast for the Dopey series, we've got two we've got two more things coming very quickly. We're going to talk about what part does strength training and flexibility, yoga, those kind of things. What what should that be playing as you're doing, getting into the bigger miles and now starting to your own up, moving into those 15, 17, 20 miles, uh, those those type of runs coming. And we're going to talk about we're going to, we're going to give you a rundown of touring the parks, what that looks like, what has changed and, and things that you definitely want to do. What's the genie plus system look like park reservations, dining, different options for that. We're going to cover all that in the next two podcasts, but, but above everything else, above everything else, you have got to be being consistent. And, and as we end every podcast, Listen very, very closely to these words because they are true and it's everything about who we are on the Do Hard Things Today podcast. And that is, go through the hard things today, tomorrow will take care of itself.